And because of time, we're going to go into the specifics of what we need to know. Amen? Amen. Household. Household wickedness. Household witchcraft. Household enemies. However way you put it. It's all the same household. Amen? Amen. And now this is Jesus' experience. As according to the passage we read, you can now see that when Jesus Christ was ready to launch his ministry, when he has all his disciples together and he's doing good things, going around and destroying the work of darkness and doing what he was called to do from the Father. Now you see that people that knew Jesus, and this is, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the only time in the Bible where Jesus' siblings are mentioned by names. So I'm telling you that whoever is saying this or those that are saying this know Jesus intimately. They know Jesus so well. They knew him as a carpenter's son. They knew his mother was Mary, his brother, Simon, Joseph, his sisters. They knew him. Amen? Amen. So when he came to his own house, people that, were, that knew him from the get-go, from the beginning, from the start of his childhood and everything, and mind you, they never had a problem with Jesus. Nobody. They never complained about Jesus. They never came to Mary to report or Joseph to report Jesus doing something that he wasn't supposed to do or no, Jesus had a good track record with them. But as soon as Jesus took the calling and started his ministry, uh, when his purpose was getting taken at lunch in his life, they had a problem. Uh, household wickedness. Household wickedness. Amen? Amen. If Jesus had household enemies, what accepts you and I today? What accepts us? Amen. So, so long as Jesus was going into the synagogue, they could deal with it. So long as Jesus was, you know, teaching them in the synagogue and doing, you know, doing good all over, they had no problem. But when he launched his ministry, the miracle went, the whole power of God, the raw power of God was about to be manifested in his life. Guess who came out? Household weakness. Amen? Amen. And they say, isn't this a competent son? Isn't there somebody we know? Isn't there somebody that grew up that we know and we see every time? Now they're trying to discredit Jesus Christ. And Jesus, as being the Son of God, a powerful Son of God, God the Son, that could do anything, couldn't perform all the full potential in his own house, in his own country, because of household wickedness. And it says that because of their own belief, Jesus didn't do much work. That is the assignment of household. Amen? Amen. And everybody has household. Mm. Everybody that is alive today has a household enemy. And the reason why I'm telling you this is not to make you start going out and suspecting anybody or pointing fingers. Because if you point fingers, you're going to be pointing in the wrong direction. Mm. If you assume, you're going to be assuming the wrong thing. Amen? It is only the Spirit of God that can truly expose, expose who the house of enemies are. Those that were read in the scripture were people that knew Jesus intimately. Could they be cousins? Could they be uncles? Aunts? Great uncle, great aunt? Friends? Neighbors? Co worker? So long as Jesus Christ was in the shop, Working, helping, make furniture, they had no problem. But when the lunch of God was coming into, when he wanted to lunch and now be, 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 be put that little town on the map, they had a problem. So likewise, you and I, the very minute you decide to give your life to Christ, that's when you see the household enemies begin to surface. Mm. That's when they come out. Oh, is it, isn't it you? Back in high school, you weren't even smart. And now you're going for medicine? Oh, isn't it you that borrow money? Now you're telling me you're opening a company? Isn't it you that is single? Now you're talking about marriage? Isn't it you that doesn't even know how to do anything? That now wants to be somebody prominent? Isn't it you that doesn't even know one plus one now wants to be a banker? Isn't it you 
the guy that was standing for himself, we're talking about you want to run for an office? Household wickedness. And the thing about household wickedness is so broad. Hmm. It's so broad. The little that we that I know is what I'm trying to share with us. Hmm. And I'm talking about the physical agents, the man agent, the, 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 the ones you see in physical. We're not talking about the spiritual ones now, the ones that attack the spirit. We're talking about the ones that know you to come around you. And these are familiar people to you and I. They know us. They know your date of birth. Some of them attended the naming ceremony. Some of them were there when you first got your license. Amen? So what we're trying to say is household wickedness will always hamper, will always try to discredit you, will always try to make sure everything you do does not add up. I remember when I first came to the US when I was couple of years back. I was, you know, young, learning things, how things operate, you know, getting myself acclimatized to the American way of life. And, you know, learning what I need to learn about survival in the US. I learned that people, people in the African American community always talk about. And has anybody heard the word the term play a hater? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Play a hater is basically what household is. Amen? So if you think of play a hater, think of household. A play a hater is an American way of, you know, the urban dictionary would define a play a hater as somebody who's not being part, but is being a critic. And the reason why they're being a critic is to make sure they discredit you. They're not criticizing you to better to make you better, but they're criticizing you to, 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 to you know to diminish your self-worth. Your, your, your ambition, your, your, your calling, what you aspire to be. That's what a player here does. He's not playing, he's not, he's not taking part in the game, but he's making sure that you don't play the game effectively. Amen? Amen? Basically, you don't play your part in the kingdom of God effectively. And what household does is their mission is to make sure that you do not fulfill the God's mandate for your life, your destiny. That is all they do. That is all they do. That is their soul and purpose. That is their mission. If you become a Christian and you still can't tell who a household enemy is, you need to rededicate your life to Christ. Amen? Amen. Because you will, you definitely have one. I have one. And I couldn't tell who were the household enemies until I gave my life to Christ. All of a sudden, my ears opened, my eyes opened. I can now see, they say things, and I can see there's a subliminal message in the things they say. They try to encourage, but it's not really encouragement, it's discouragement. They try to give you comfort, but actually it's not comfort. All it is is just to put you where they want you to be. They will have a problem with the way you fast. Some people, They'll have a problem with the way you pray the prayer line. Some people, they'll have, a pray, they'll have a problem with how you don't do things you used to do no more. Amen? Mm-hmm. The assignment of household is to make sure that you don't live up to God's divine destiny for your life. That is their sole purpose. Because once you do that, they fail. Mm-hmm. They're not willing to do, but they have a problem with you doing. They're not willing to fast, but they have a problem with you fasting. They're not willing to go to church, but they complain about you going to church. They're not willing to give, but they complain about you giving money to to, 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 to various charity and to help a ministry to do anything. So long as you're on the right path in life, so long as you find your purpose with God, so long as you are now living holy and righteous, that is when you realize that. Friends, families, uncles, aunts, cousins, whoever it may be, co-worker, that's when they have a problem with you. And this is something that we, as children of God, need to acknowledge. We need to acknowledge this. Also, if you read in the book of, book of Micah, chapter 7, verse 6, you don't have to read it now, but I'm just letting you know that 
you know, Micah chapter six, um, chapter seven, verse six talks about how um, a son will dishonor fathers, um, daughter against mother, sister-in-law against mother-in-law, all basically against his household. And this concept of household is not something that just started today. Remember, Satan was somewhere before he fell. Where was he? He was in heaven. He knew God. He knew. He knew the presence of God. He knew. He knew how. You know, things work in heaven. He was a part of it. But what happened? What happened? Cool. So, Satan, after that, and mind you, some people think, you know, there was a big war in heaven and God was fighting. God has never fought Satan. God is too big. And he never fought Satan. He got Angel Gabriel and Angel Michael to kick them out. All the one third of the angel. God is too big. To step, get off his throne to want to fight his own. So yeah, his own creation. God knows everything he, he created the devil with, but the devil doesn't even know what God created him with. All the devil knows is I'm gonna do evil and I'll continue to do evil. And I have a short time. That's all the devil knows. <laughs> he doesn't even know God. He doesn't really know how God thinks. Amen. Amen. God is so big. That he didn't even get up to fight Satan. Do you understand? Hmm. And Angel Michael commanded, you know, he was a commander of all those angels that went and fought. And they won flawlessly, kicked him out of heaven because God said, okay, I don't want you here. Get out. Bye, Michael. All right, get him out. And that was it. And he's here making noise. And he has to change that tactic. Those tactics, he hasn't changed it. He has still employed agents, human agents to cause circumstances, to cause situation. And the way household is, is it really targets your soul, your soul, your mind, will, and your emotion, your emotion. You cannot fight household being emotional. You don't even stand a chance. You haven't even started fighting yet if you want to be emotion, emotional. You haven't even moved anything. Those tears are not even flushing away anything. All it knows is you have to stand up. You have to stand up and put on your armor of God and fight in the spirit. Amen? Fight in the spirit. People are telling you things. It's not them working. It's not them thinking. It's just the household. It's that spirit that is within them, that is causing them to act up and flare up the way they're flaring up and doing things that are derailing you. Jesus dealt with it. Abraham dealt with it. David, as much as he was a strong man, defeating all these giants and Goliath and his brothers and everything, he still had household problems in his own house. His son, raped his stepsister, his son, killed his other half-brother. I mean, it was a mess. Amen? Even David's own advisor, what was his name? Somebody remind me. Ahithophel. Ahithophel. Betrayed. I mean, these are powerful men of God. And it happened to them. So why are we Christians sitting out feeling sorry for ourselves when we're going through it? It shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. All the ammunition that we need is right here. From Genesis to Revelation. It's household. <laughs> Funny enough, directly or indirectly, talks about household. And how God dealt with household finally is in the book of Revelation. Where he said, okay, enough. Now, I, I, I'm going to say something about this. And it puts the devil right where he belongs, but good, forever and forever. So now, my brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to say is, household, player haters, they're not missed. They're not going nowhere. Your level of participation in the word of God, my level of participation in devouring the word of God will determine how strong I'm gonna fight. How strong you're gonna fight. Amen? Amen? So now with that being said, let us examine our life and see how we we're not fighting effectively. 
See how the household is getting the best of our emotions. 